Hello, I'm Mayor Ron Rakowski and welcome to the Greenwood Village Mayor Show. During today's program, we are going to visit with the leaders of two of the best school districts in the state, the Cherry Creek School District and the Littleton Public Schools. We will learn what makes both the school districts successful and why many parents choose both Cherry Creek and Littleton Public Schools as their preferred choice for their children's K-12 education. Both of these districts are known for their quality education and their commitment to preparing your children to become the next greatest generation for our country. Mary Chesley is the superintendent of Cherry Creek School District, where she has worked as a teacher, school principal, and administrator since 1989. Superintendent Chesley is well known for her commitment to academic achievement that leads to post-secondary success. Scott Murphy is a strong leader with a long history in education. Prior to being appointed as superintendent of Littleton Public Schools in July 2006, Scott served as assistant superintendent of business services and chief financial officer of LPS for 16 years. Over the years, many have turned to Scott for his advice because of his expertise as he has served in various leading positions in public education. Mary, can you tell us about the demographics of the Cherry Creek School System? Sure. Cherry Creek School District has uh, 50,000 students. So that student body is the same size as the entire population of Grand Junction, Colorado. Those 50,000 students live within 108 square miles, that is Cherry Creek. Greenwood Village is at the westernmost part of the Cherry Creek School District. So as a school district, our demographics really reflect the last national census. And um, our breakdown currently is about 45% of our students are non-white, 55% of our students are white, about 27% of our students are on free and reduced lunch. We have over 100 languages spoken in the school district. But what's interesting about that, less than 5,000 students need English language education. So many of our students who speak another language are also very, very fluent in English. Uh, the Greenwood Village portion of our school district is at the western part of the, uh, the school district. And all of those students in Greenwood Village flow through the Cherry Creek High School feeder. Uh, one of our uh, absolutely uh, flagship schools. Uh, our diversity on the west side is a little less than it is throughout the school district. The socioeconomic um, makeup is a little bit higher than the rest of the school district. Our primary um, second uh, to our, our white ethnicity, our, our Asian students, uh, our students who come through the Greenwood uh, village part of the, our school district uh, absolutely are successful as they transition through the elementary programs into the high school. And then our um, teaching population and administrative population doesn't quite yet reflect exactly um, our student population. We work very hard on that in training and hiring. And um, our teachers, about three-fourths of them have beyond bachelor's degrees. And I would tell you the other fourth are working on those degrees. Wonderful. Scott? Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I, I feel so grateful to be able to have such a wonderful peer, uh, such as Mary, and uh, I think of our uh, districts as partners, brothers and sisters, if you will, and uh, it's just a pleasure to be here, so thank you. Uh, Littleton is a small district, geographically. We're about uh, 28 square miles. Uh, half of our district is in the city of Littleton. The other half is in the city of Centennial. We have uh, 50, 15,000 students. And uh, if I were to say anything about the district uh, to characterize it, I would say it's a somewhat in intimate district. Uh, people know one another. About, uh, we have a little over 20 schools, and about 25% of our, our school population attends a school outside their boundary. We have full school choice, as most do districts do, based on uh, space available. Uh, approximately 20% of our district chooses to come into Littleton Public Schools. So we have them form, um, uh, some distance away, uh, many of them in our surrounding districts. We also have some di students that go to other districts, but our net in-migration is probably the largest of any district from uh, Wyoming 
to New Mexico, uh, at least of our last check, um, along the Front Range. So, so we're very proud of that, some wonderful students. Our demographics have changed over time. Interestingly, when I first came to the district in 1990, the number of languages we had were seven. Today, there are over 50 languages, and I'm sure for larger districts, uh, there are many more than that. I think it makes our schools richer. It's a, a greater reflection of what the world looks like. We have students from uh, around the globe uh, in our schools, and I, th I think our students benefit from those. Um, our students go on to college, approximately 92% of them. Uh, our graduation rates um, are above 98%. We have a variety of schools. We have a school of the arts um, at our elementary level. We have international baccalaureate programs. We have uh, science, technology, engineering programs within our high schools. Um, interestingly, we have, uh, we have our middle school uh, science curriculum that will be all electronically delivered, including the textbooks that are coming up. But uh, very proud of our district, strong parent involvement, and the uh, uh, the virtues of Littleton are a little bit like a small town. Uh, when you're doing well, you know it. When you have a few issues, you know it. So people are in good communication and uh, we're primarily residential um, and our tax base uh, reflects that. So very proud of our uh, community support, continues to rate high, high trust in our teachers. Our uh, our ratio of teachers to students, uh, much like Cherry Creek, is lower at the, at the younger grades, um, is in that 22, 23 range. And when they get larger, uh, we have to break the school sizes up a little bit. But uh, as people come in, it's a little bit of a surprise sometimes to us. We're not a rapidly growing district. We're fairly stable. We grew about 1% this year, but uh, fortunately it hasn't changed our class size as much. Good. Well, let's uh, segue into an assessment of learning, and by that I mean uh, CSAP, uh, ACT, SAT, and where you rank uh, both regionally and perhaps even on a national level. Mary? Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> we will go to the national test, too, because as Scott has already mentioned, um, Cherry Creek and I think Littleton, too, are um, kind of paradox communities in that uh, they are very, very highly educated communities, but very few of our residents are natives of Colorado. So people, as you said in the introduction, move to these two school districts um, for, for the education. So in, as you know, in Colorado, we have state testing that is um, the large accountability measure for the state. Um, most of our population wants something else besides CSAP. Uh, they have not had an experience and don't see um, a comparative for how the CSAP is with other tests. So um, in our school district, every one of our schools is in the top two um, highest accreditation ratings in the state. In fact, 95% of our schools are in the very highest um, accreditation rating. And that is based on mostly CSAP, ACT at high school, which are uh, students perform well above national and state averages. Uh, our graduates, um, when they leave us, are prepared for college, for the uh, military academies, and some of them um, take a spell and go to work for a while and then come back um, to get more education, a more technical education perhaps. Uh, so how are our students rate um, internally? We use that state data and really dissect it. And our, um, our goal is not just that students perform above averages, but that every student grows every year. And uh, one of the things that we talk about is it's not about averages, it's about individuals. So does every student, no matter where they start, do they make more than a year's progress? And then going back to our national tests, uh, many of our teachers in our high schools especially are uh, known uh, throughout the country for what they do as teachers, but also what they do, uh, whether it is science and, and getting patents or experiments that they are doing or working with higher education at the same time that they are teaching. Um, so I, I think both of our districts uh, have educators that are in this for the long haul, and they are in um, education to get our students ready to be that next successful generation. And in our school district, that means uh, graduating from college. So 
we look at it as a, a, at least a pre-K 16-year curriculum. Well, thank you. Scott? Very proud of um, our students' accomplishments, and I must say our teachers' accomplishments as well. Um, it's our teachers and our families that make good things happen for kids. Um, and we're very fortunate that we have uh, the type of parents that spend time in the classroom, will volunteer, and teachers that give uh, every bit of their time and energy to uh, helping things occur. We have very strong test scores, like Cherry Creek. Um, it's, a, um, it's something we're proud of, but it's not the only thing we do. I think uh, one of our missions is extraordinary learning and that we bring out the gift and gifts that every child brings it to us. And some of it's academics, some of it's athletics, some of it is music and arts. In terms of academics, um, uh, we do, uh, again, uh, assess ourselves on multiple assessments, uh, one of which is our state test, our CSAPs. Uh, we rank very high with that. We are accredited in our, all of our schools, very high in the first or second category. We have a number of uh, governor's awards, uh, John Irwin Schools of Excellence, and our district um, for the third consecutive year has been uh, accredited with distinction. And we're, all, we're the largest of the 18 districts across Colorado that do that. And I think we may be one of the few along the front range. I think there may be several smaller districts down south that are that way. So that's something everyone's proud and can hold their head high about. But I, I think I'm the most proud about having a comprehensive program, something for every child uh, that, stretches, that stretches us to provide what they need. And I think... Uh, even in today's uh, economic times, if we can do that, we are going to have uh, winners coming out of our classroom and our students and parents holding their head high. Thank you. Um, before we get into STEM, which I want to have special emphasis on, are there any uh, sp particular special emphasis in individual schools, like a music school, uh, one that has, as an example like that, uh, Mary? Yes. Um, in Cherry Creek, as we, we talk about choice, and choice is absolutely a, a topic in public education. Scott referred to uh, choice in his district. In the same way, we have about 4,000 students who don't go to their neighborhood school. But our school board's commitment is um, first to an excellent school in every neighborhood. Um, we do have a challenge school that is a magnet school for um, uh, very high uh, intellect students and that's a K through 8 school. We have um, in our last um, bond issue in 2008 we were able to build an Institute of Science and Technology uh, on the Overland Prairie campus and uh, what I would say to you that was the beginning of STEM and I know we'll talk about that later in our district but um, we've really gotten to the learning of it. It's not about the building it's what happens inside it's the programming so um, each of our buildings is now required to have STEM curriculum um, going on. But we don't have um, schools that um, are specialized in one area. It is trying to provide a comprehensive program in all of our schools. Every student has the opportunity to, to have the arts, um, to have those after school programs. Our, the largest high school in the state is in Cherry Creek School District. And, um, they have 100 after-school clubs. So I, I think, um, Scott said he's a, a small town, I think we're a little larger town um, in Cherry Creek, and, and try to make sure that um, while students are in their K-12 education, they can specialize, but they don't have to lose some of the, the broader part, parts of the program. And I've been amazed that when students are seniors and they may know exactly what they want to do, take a couple math courses, but they also, and, and their families, don't want to give up the rest of, of life, whether that's arts or activities or athletics. Scott? I think um, we have a, a, as I said, a comprehensive program, but we have specialty schools as well. Uh, we have an elementary arts program, quite popular. In fact, a third of their students uh, do not come from that attendance area. They come from some other attendance area in the school district or from outside the district. We also have alternative school programs uh, in different schools for our middle school students and our high school students who aren't quite ready for that transition into either middle or uh, into the high school. We have an international baccalaureate program. And these 
these aren't for every child, but many of our, our parents uh, involve that, are involved with that. In terms of STEM, we've always viewed uh, science and technology, math, uh, within our existing curriculum as an emphasis that's available for some students. In fact, our math and science scores continue to rank at the top in the metropolitan area. So we're very proud of that and what our children have done. Um, we also have concurrent enrollment, as Cherry Creek does, where students can go on, uh, if that course isn't offered, go on into a community college or actually one of our colleges downtown. Uh, we have Arapahoe Community College located not far from my office in Littleton where there are about 25,000 students in secondary education. But in fact, at that college we also run an online program for our high school students. But a number of our high school students go either to Arapahoe Community College or Metro or even University College. Colorado um, in Denver to take additional courses of which they will get college credit or in certain circumstances the professors have been certified some of our teachers are professors and they can earn their college credit right there in the university so there's a wide variety of options well we've just heard of two really dynamic situations and I think what I want to move into now is something that we are getting tremendous uh, coverage from a national media point of view and also from the Congress and that's and we've used an acronym that I do need to explain it's called STEM science technology engineering and mathematics and if there's a, a buzzword in education from my point of view today that's it uh, Mary would you like to uh, tell us uh, where Cherry Creek is in the STEM programs sure um, as I said earlier uh, um, our curriculum in science is very much um, geared to a STEM background. That means, um, so at elementary school, what does that sound like or look like? That means at elementary school, uh, students are reading more technical uh, books, less fairy tales, less fiction, not to the exclusion of those, but um, more engaged across the curriculum kind of technical uh, reading. Uh, there are a lot of experiments that go on in our elementary schools, um, kids understand the scientific process. Uh, robotics is happening. So we move to um, middle and high school. Uh, we do have students that are getting their patents on um, projects that they have done. We have a student last year who did some um, AIDS investigation and uh, experimentation with CU. And this isn't um, a rarity anymore. Our, our kids who are, are moving through the curriculum are actually moving through the curriculum and moving right into uh, what the business world is looking for um, to have that prepared student. So in, in the same way that Scott talks about um, what we have done in the past with IB and advanced placement classes, I think the, the next era with STEM coming on, um, students and, and us as a school district are um, trying to decide and have students decide which avenue do you take when you're in high school because advanced placement a lot of students graduate with an, enough credits to finish their uh, freshman year as Scott said concurrent enrollment some kids are graduating with their their um, um, associates degree and then we have some students in inter uh, international baccalaureate so I think we um, are preparing K-8 for students to take any of these high-level uh, pathways. I, I am convinced that when students graduate from our high schools, they know more and have had more experiences than my generation had graduating from college. Uh, I, I think the mentorships that come with STEM are, are just fascinating, and we have such a, uh, a community that um, values education, but as business moves um, to both of our communities, a business is looking for and uh, communities that value uh, students' education. Business is looking for that next generation. So we have the class of 2025 in kindergarten, and our goal is that when they leave us and when they graduate, that they are uh, fully ready for what um, higher education is going to offer. And we think it, at, in 2025, it is going to be so much uh, more closely melded with business. I think those opportunities of internships, uh, mentorships coming into our schools, and I think STEM, as you've indicated, has been the impetus. Uh, 
as soon as we got STEM going, it, it isn't long in education before another acronym comes about. And I've heard, um, and I've heard it from our parent community. They want to make sure that we have STEAM, and the A in STEM for them is um, let's make sure we have the arts and have that that part uh, for our students. And uh, again, this is anecdotal, but so many of our ad advanced science students are left and right brain kids, and, and the arts are very um, much in their education and they want them in their lives. Do you think that A could also stand for athletics? Um, I've heard people say that and at this time um, I think it's got one A and it uh, initially has met arts. Anything that keeps kids connected to school and keeps students engaged, um, athletics has a very important role. Um, and then I guess our final A would be activities. All right. Scott? The concept of STEM is, is I think, um, taking some front and center for many of our districts. We have a, um, a school that's beginning, actually, uh, one of our elementary schools uh, with a STEM emphasis, um, and a high school that's starting um, to now explore in the development of an engineering laboratory along with uh, its other curricular program. I must say, um, one of the things that I'm, I'm strong on, and I think our community's strong on, is inter interdisciplinary study, um, along with character development and communication. We have a strong alliance with our business. Lockheed Martin has come in a lot on um, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, but they've also come in and say we need leaders. We need people who can walk in that door with academic excellence, but also know how to communicate well and also be team players. And how can they work in, in multidisciplinary? Who brings the artistic element in the school? Who brings the strong mathematics? And how do they work together to develop? Much as Mary said, we have, we have children designing um, drones today. If, uh, uh, through robotics, we transfer helicopters, small helicopters, between one district and another. Now, these kids are beyond um, just STEM. Yes, there's engineering and math, but there, there's also the artistic design and the communication stages. And I'm just, I'm just in awe when I watch what they do. But when I go to our league, uh, our league meets or championships in speech and debate, um, in orchestra and band, I'm stunned how good these kids are. And when Mary says STEAM, I really believe that arts have to be a part of the whole picture. Well. Those, our viewers, I'm sure at this point, are very excited and always, like myself, wanting to go back to school right now and, <laughs> and get involved in these programs. Uh, when we first, uh, my wife and I first knew we were moving to Greenwood Village, uh, the first thing we looked for was, uh, for our son, were the schools. So I think it's very important uh, for every family uh, and also for the families that don't have children to have strong schools. And that brings me to my next point, which is financial, and because schools run on money. And I know you, Mary, have just had an election uh, that uh, was turned out the, the right way. Could you tell us not only about the election, but also the about the financial health of the Cherry Creek District? Sure. Um, as you were asking your question, I was thinking about the election because in our school district, 70% of, of the voters um, do not have children in schools anymore. And uh, we won our election at a rate that was higher than even in the 90s. So um, as we were on the stump, and I want to give credit to our school board because they were out on the stump every night, um, there is a value in Greenwood Village for an educated community. And um, as we listened to the, the non-parent voters and they absolutely said that the association between high property values and um, an excellent education system was very important to them and they then went to the vote uh, to the voting the ballot box and um, and voted to raise their taxes in a time that was um, not easy for them to do so we're most appreciative of that community and it is um, almost a symbiotic relationship between our community because um, as we talk about um, parents and then the non-parent, the people who come into our buildings to volunteer, it is a, a wealth of information and, and uh, a whole generation's knowledge that it comes to our students because these are 
successful, um, perhaps retirees are, are very active um, business people in the military, science people, who um, our kids have access to in, in a way that um, I don't think any other generation has had before. So as Cherry Creek looks forward, um, I, I think I know we have learned the lesson. Um, Bill and Melinda Gates and many, many foundations have spent billions and billions of dollars on what's the, the secret, what's the silver bullet for public education. And after spending $2 billion, uh, the Gates Foundation said it's having an effective teacher in every classroom. So Cherry Creek Schools um, is going to put the majority of the money into um, ensuring that we hire and retain the best teachers for our students, um, that we add technology. During the last uh, four years, we've cut $40 million from a $400 million budget. We haven't bought a computer in a few years. So Cherry Creek is ready up to the walls. Now we're able to put technology on uh, the student side of the walls in the hands of students and um, be able to move forward in that way. And then, of course, our STEM programs. The one other thing our election will allow us, uh, we're, we're growing at 1,000 students a year. It's maybe about 500. So we need some uh, new classrooms in two of our high schools. And uh, that's where the majority of the money will be spent. And I think um, I am very proud of our school board for putting uh, the direction and the money closest to the students. And that's with their teachers. Thank you. Scott? We've been fortunate. Uh, we passed an election in 2010. Uh, we're currently at the maximum allowable amount by, by elections. What I found interesting, I did some research uh, about the district and its history with elections with its public. Uh, our surveys have always been fairly strong in terms of the support for the school district and particularly what's going on in the classroom. But I went back to 1905. There was a slight uh, recession with Teddy Roosevelt <coughs> at that time and they passed an election. And I went up through history and I noticed that in World War I, they passed an election. In the Depression, they passed an election. World War II, Korean War, the Vietnam War. During the Persian Gulf, we passed elections. Uh, we went through the tech crisis. In the middle of it, the community passed an election. And in the economic downfall, uh, after 2008, they passed an election. And when I went through all the elections, Littleton, in its history, has never lost an election. Its support from the community now, we don't go all the time, so that's helpful also, but the support from the community has been amazing. If the right cause is there and it's for children, it's not an issue for one party or another, because I like to say the party that's the strongest is the education party in our school district, and they have stood up, much like Cherry Creeks have in, this, uh, in our areas, to say education is important and we're not going to sacrifice it, even as funding has gone down at the state level. And certainly there continue to be challenges, uh, both because of economics and multiple priorities across the state and the country. But we're very proud of that continued support and couldn't do it without them. Well, I think that uh, any community like Greenwood Village or our neighbors, uh, which are involved in both the Littleton and Cherry Creek districts, that the health of that community, the first place to gauge it is in its education of its children, its most valuable resource, its children. So in that regard, and kind of summing up, you both have uh, mentioned community support, but let's take a little bit deeper uh, look at that as to, uh, like what you said, Scott, on Lockheed and on people, the retirees coming in the program. Is there any uh, additional things you could uh, tell our viewers about, Mary? Sure. Um, in the same way, we do have partnerships with um, each of our schools, and it's interesting. It seems to always start with a parent or um, a neighbor. So um, at each of our 60 buildings, there are mentorships going on, internships going on. And then um, since the early 90s, Cherry Creek has a Cherry Creek Schools Foundation. And there are 25 board members on that foundation. And um, they have embraced this whole concept of STEM and also having an excellent teacher in every classroom. So our foundation is very much engaged in um, bringing corporations, companies into the schools as um, uh, new businesses move into Greenwood Village. We had an experience the other night at a foundation event. Yes. And um, 
they were there and uh, took front seat. And um, community does join our foundation in the business community, and we're grateful. I believe you raised over $55,000 in one day um, or one I, night. And I stayed till the end, and it was uh, $65,000. Oh. So wow. thank you for you being there and yeah. your support in the new businesses in Greenwood Village. Well, great. Uh, Scott? Um, well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Cherry Creek. One of, the, one of the great things is both our personal side, but also professional in the size. We have done exclusive contracts in the past. We do cooperative purchasing anywhere we can make efficiencies in our districts, lower the cost, but get the best product. It's brought millions into our district. One of the unique things, uh, when I came to Littleton, and it was actually highlighted on ABC News and continues to this day, we have a sen senior citizen tax rebate program. We have many, many of our senior citizens that are both supportive of the district, but they work for us and we will pay up to half their property taxes if they're 60 years and older if they come and volunteer in our district. It puts more adults in the classroom, lowers the, adults, um, uh, the, the adult to student ratio, and continues to deepen that connection uh, to public education. So we feel very fortunate. We have Lockheed Martin, we have a foundation, we have our banks involved. Um, we don't have as much industry. As I said, we're residential. People raise their children and the grandchildren stay, uh, the grandparents stay and raise their grandchildren and have them go to our schools. But very fortunate. I, I think I have uh, uh, association with the best school districts in the metro area between Cherry Creek and ourselves. Now, granted, I'm biased, but I think if you put the statistics up against any other districts, you're looking at two of the finest districts in the state. <coughs> um, Mary, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Mary, any closing comments? You know, um, our commitment will uh, remain. And I mentioned earlier, it, it is a little daunting when people hear it. Uh, class of uh, 2025 is in kindergarten. Our commitment is to look at the uh, how are we ensuring that every day that every student in Cherry Creek is, um, we're finding that genius in each child and we are moving them toward um, all their potential. We know that that Kindergartner, 80% um, of them are going to have jobs that are not even created today, but do we have them ready um, to be successful? And um, Cherry Creek's promise is to uh, educate the next greatest generation. Scott, closing comment? Uh, many of the same things that Mary said. I, I, our obligation, um, our joy is bringing out the gift of every child. Uh, it comes through um, many different ways, and um, if I were to say anything, um, I would be a thank you to our parents for standing behind um, all of their students, um, for our teachers in the classroom, and that we continue to provide the best education possible so when those students leave our district, they're wet, ready for a world, jobs they don't know, uh, colleges and universities are changing. But more than anything, we want happy, productive uh, students that feel like they have a place and meaning in what they do. Well. On behalf of myself, the City Council, and the citizens of Greenwood Village, I want to thank you and all of the folks that you represent as the leaders of both the districts for what you do in taking care, as I said earlier, of our most valuable resource, our children. You're very welcome. Thank you. A positive and successful learning environment is a result of excellent schools, strong family values, and a community's shared vision that leads every child towards achievement. Communities play an essential role in preparing our children for success in academics and life. That is why we believe the classroom should be the most important room in America. We leave you today having visited some aspects of the Cherry Creek School District and Littleton Public Schools to see how these programs are making a difference in helping our youth become prepared for the future. That's a wrap. I'm Mayor Ron Rakowski. Thank you for joining us here on GVTV8. Today's students are reaching new heights of learning. Thanks to the Cherry Creek School District and Littleton Public Schools, students are gaining the skills necessary to succeed in today's challenging world through the integration of STEM. STEM is uh, it's, it's basically an integration of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, the concept is, is not necessarily new. 
but it's really just looking at uh, nationwide. There's uh, been a push to really integrate all the different uh, areas. And at Cherry Creek High School, that's basically what we're focusing on right now, is trying to look at all of our groups and our clubs um, in combination with our teachers and our classes and really trying to integrate all those different areas so that we're much more literate in terms of um, in working through those with the students and giving them great opportunities uh, as they move on to their uh, college and or career uh, choices. At Cherry Creek High School, students are offered an array of STEM courses and can participate in STEM clubs. Classes like physics push the momentum of students to think with energy and force. I always like the idea of creating and doing things with my hands. I never liked the normal science classes where it was a teacher giving lectures about something and you never understood, you never did anything with your hands. I'm very, I'm very hands on and I like, I like this class because it, it's very, you do things, it's not just learning. The undertaking of scientific and mathematical principles in physics can be challenging, but it doesn't stop these students from solving complicated calculations. There's a lot of math. Um, but I've always really liked math, so it's been easy for me, but a lot of people it's really hard. I wanted to take this class because I really like that it applies to real life things. Like we learn about stuff and then we do labs about it so you can apply it to like things you can actually see, which is nice. Like physics, the robotics club at Cherry Creek High School is also a part of the school's STEM lineup geared at preparing young people to succeed in an increasingly competitive global workforce. The real world experience you gain from this, um, we work with mentors that are engineers from industry that come in, donate their time, and having to work under a deadline towards a specific goal it creates such skills and just it really gets you acclimated to this sort of real world environment. And so when I started this, I was in eighth grade. I was young to be starting this. Usually you're in high school. Um, and coming through this program is the singular reason I want to be an aerospace engineer. It's totally reshaped the classes I've taken in high school, the direction I'm going in, the colleges I'm looking at. It has been so powerful in my own life that I could only imagine if there's a huge student body at Creek, the fact that we didn't have this available and this opportunity to other kids really didn't make sense to me. We're trying to create a robot for the FRC challenge and uh, we have to create a robot that can throw frisbees into goals and be able to climb a pyramid. So currently we have only the chassis working, which is like the main base of the robot. These two are the motors connected to our gearboxes, which distribute the power to the belt drives, which gets it to the wheel. Connected to them are the speed regulators, which get the right amount of power to the motors to make it go the speed we want it. These are connected to through the power control cables to the remote control device, which we are currently using just to figure out how to drive it. And everything is connected to the power distribution board. This distributes the power throughout the entire robot. Connected to this is the main breaker, and the battery would usually go here, but we don't currently have it on the robot. So we would connect to here. The challenges are it's everything is new. You know, we, we have never done this before, so we're seeing new parts, new pieces, new pieces to the puzzle. Uh, I'm a biologist by training, and so having a robot sitting in front of me is brand new. And I think that's kind of what's cool about this is that, I mean, as you can see, the robot is, it's a bunch of everything. And so a physicist couldn't do this, where, or an electrician couldn't do this. It's everybody working together in one individual thing. According to the Center for Educational Policy and Analysis and the U.S. Department of Labor, 70% of all existing jobs have a technical component and 90% of all future jobs will require technical knowledge. Careers in STEM fields are the fastest growing and highest paying positions in the 21st century global economy. This means STEM students will be at an advantage when competing for high-tech, high-wage jobs of the future. The importance is not, not necessarily just Cherry Creek and Cherry Creek High School, um, but as a district we're really trying to focus on um, looking at all these different areas and how we can support students uh, for their post, uh, their secondary readiness, you know, in terms of what what they can do um, with their college and career. 
nationwide, when you look at the number of jobs and, and you look at the areas, the industries where there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, work available, that's what we're really trying to push and trying to get kids exposed to all these different areas so that they have greater opportunities as they move on. Um, and again, it's a, it's a nationwide um, crisis, if you will, in terms of the number of uh, positions and jobs that are going to be available. And when we look at glo you know, competing globally and, and internationally, um, there's a lot of work that we need to do. So at Cherry Creek High School, we're trying to really emphasize these areas and really trying to expose kids to the different uh, areas that we have. So. At Newton Middle School of Littleton Public Schools, technology teacher Mark Feiner knows the STEM statistics and is passionate about his role in providing his students with an introduction to STEM curriculum. Uh, technology is important. Technology education is important for all students in the school, regardless of what their interests lie in, whether they want to go into the sciences or math or engineering or construction fields. It doesn't matter where their interests lie. It could be in language arts. They could be history bound. Um, but what it does is it gives the students a sense of ownership in projects. It gives them collaboration skills, working in groups, um, problem solving skills in general. So whether it's, it's something where their boat has a leak, uh, they're creating whatever it is and they have a problem, they really work through it and they use the engineering design cycle. It's something you use whether you're doing a book report and revising and editing a draft or you're putting together a plane and it keeps banking to the left. So there's a lot of problem solving skills that they learn to, to work with. Well, ever since I was little, I have loved building things. Like with my dad, I loved building stuff and I've always wanted to be like an engineer or an architect. So I decided to sign up for technology education in sixth grade and I've done it every year since and I've loved it. I think tech's a lot of fun because we get to work with different materials and we get to do a lot of different kind of software stuff like they're doing right there. And it was a lot of fun to work with my friends on making my designs better. Combining technology and engineering, students in all grades at Newton Middle School are introduced to a variety of STEM projects. The projects are designed to replicate practical real-world applications that encourage students to think critically and solve complex problems. This was designed for our annual PE fitness run in the spring. So again, ownership, they, their designs became what the entire school wore for our run. So we do solar powered boats. Um, we use photovoltaic cells and they design it, they construct it out of sheet metal. Um, and of course, at, at the end, we, we race them. And that's, that's the fun part for the students, is to see their work actually come to life. Sixth graders do a flight unit so again, they, they design their planes on the computer. They run simulations on the computer. I have a big thing for like computer simulations and making stuff on the computer and then actually building them online. Because I think it's really cool how we can simulate stuff and just do all the math and science on the computer and then actually build it. Well, I'd heard good things about Mr. Feiner and about the class in general, and then when I had it in sixth grade, I loved it. It was wonderful. And so I've tried to get in every year since, and I just love working with all the materials and being able to use computers like this. Nationally recognized school districts like the Cherry Creek School District and Littleton Public Schools and their commitment to STEM and other vital school programs will enable the next generation of innovators and ensure the success of our nation's future. So technology education has really evolved from what used to be manual arts and became industrial arts. Creating and building is a huge part. We still need people who understand tools and materials. We just teach it in a different way now. Everyone wants 21st century skills. We really apply that. Um, at this point with them in middle school, six out of the 10 jobs that these students will have when they finish high school or post-secondary don't exist yet. And so we can't teach them a specific trade right now. We have to teach them how to adapt. And if they can be problem solvers and they can have critical thinking skills and collaboration skills, they can you know, form our world when they leave school.